Hey everybody, Norm over here at the All Guitar Network for the Vintage Guitar Minute. And this is just a very cool guitar that I just wanted to talk about. These are affordable, but this is a pristine example of a 1957 0018 Martin. And uh, the very first ones that they did in the 0018 uh, had a slotted head and they were 12 fret. This is a 14 fret guitar. This is rosewood fingerboard and bridge, mahogany sides and back in really beautiful shape. Uh, the original tuners on here, um, uh, spruce top. Um, one thing that's really cool about these guitars is there was a time that I went into a recording studio with a friend of mine and I brought a bunch of guitars in for yeah. the person to use and he was a well-known person and uh, we had like pre-war D18s and D28s and uh, 45 style guitars. Um, these guitars are one of the easiest guitars to record because they're not really bass heavy, they're very balanced and you don't have to EQ the hell out of them to make them sound good. Um, just a very beautiful example of this guitar, not fancy and Martins in general are understated. So as you can see, it's just got the dots on the fingerboard, 14 fret neck with the Martin logo up on top as a decal. Uh, but this one has had a neck set and a lot of old Martins, that's something that they need after all the years of tension on the necks, the angle slightly changes. This one we have done a neck set to. Other than that, it's completely original and just a beautiful example. using my fingers but with a pick it really brightens up and sounds really beautiful but this is one of the coolest and affordable guitar and a lot of times people say to me what guitars uh, are kind of sleepers which can go up in value and become a good investment over a period of time and I never could guarantee anything's gonna go up in value but I'd say this is a very good bet and if this guitar even doubled in value th again this is 1957 in beautiful condition this is a guitar that I think in 10 years could double in value, maybe more, but it's such a prime example. And if you get really good examples of whatever the models are, they play good and sound good, and are in great condition and are original finish and all that, these are things that are investment grade, but also functional art. Something you could use, something you get some miles out of, and if you take good care of it, I think it'll be a very good investment down the road. Norm from the All Guitar Network at the Vintage Guitar Minute. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys uh, check out our other episodes. And it's just quick and easy. I just want to show you some of the features these guitars have. And I hope you guys enjoy the All Guitar Network. So this is a beautiful brown case. What this is, is a 1959 uh, Fender Jazzmaster. And uh, it's a slab fingerboard, obviously Brazilian rosewood, clay dots. Uh, when I say the slab, slab is a thicker fingerboard and it's got this extended curved lamination at the end. Um, the cool thing about these boards, if you look and see how thick it is here, um, if for some reason you play the hell out of this guitar and it needs to be refretted, um, it, when they pull the frets out, if you have to plane the board or anything like that, there's so much more board left. Also, it produces a little different sound, you know, with the thicker fingerboard. The earlier, the more desirable on these. So the very first ones that you see um, will be in a two-tone sunburst with an anodized gold guard. What is very unusual about this one is the gold parts. And there's inside, even the strap has got like a gold uh, clasp on this, which you don't really see. So I think this was all part of the package. And it's in beautiful shape, ash body. This has a tortoise guard. Now I had uh, one uh, jazz master years ago that uh, was owned by Freddie Tavares, and it was experimental. So it was desert sand color with a gold guard and a maple neck. I mean, it was the only maple neck jazz master that I've ever seen from back then. It was experimental, it went before they went into production. Uh, but what's cool about these guitars, and this is like the Michael Lemo special, they have a little bit different, uh, you know, design on the bridge and the tremolo system than the Strat. And, um, you know, for years everybody kind of liked the Strat thing, but now this gives you some added options, like Michael likes to play behind the bridge to get these harmonics. Um, you know, it just has a different tension. Also, the one flaw in these designs 
is the way the bridge, how the string rests in these little grooves here. And so there's like, uh, you know, a number of bridges, like a mastery bridge that are aftermarket that don't affect the original originality of the guitar. You can put it right in where this is and it gives the strings a little bit more of a break and kind of fastens them in a little bit better. So that way, you know, when you're bending that they don't pop out. You know, a lot of the old ones, if you're gentle with them, they're absolutely fine to play with the original bridge on there. But if you're really tough on the guitar, the mastery is a, a good way to go to um, just lock the strings down. So, um, but as you can see, Ash has got, you know, this kind of grain in here where you can kind of see the grain. The alder, which they went to later, is very plain. And uh, so this has got some really beautiful grain in the wood. Um, it's a very clean guitar, uh, not mint, but really, really nice with its original brown case. Um, just one of the nicer examples and one of the rarest jazz masters you'll see, two-tone sunburst with gold parts, 1959.